Now, let's finish up this last section with the thermal. I spent a lot of time over the last 30 years, particularly the last 20 years, working at Providence Hospital with an orthopedic surgeon. This orthopedic surgeon specializes in uh, frostbite and cold injury. In fact, I've often said this is Dr. William Mills, who recently, well, he's retired now. But you know you've arrived when the encyclopedia and the dictionary calls you and asks you to define hypothermia and frostbite. I mean, I can think of no greater honor. I mean, you are the world authority on this topic. And I had the pleasure of working with him and going to the operating room and working with people who had their hands and fingers and toes cut off because of frostbite and cold injury and cold water drowning and a whole host of things that I had not known that that's why or what I would get from living in Alaska. I knew there was temperature was an important thing, but I didn't know how important it really was. Look at these people who have temperature regulation problems. They have poor circulation in the extremities. They have migraine headaches. They have Raynaud's disease. Raynaud's is a patriotic disorder, we call it, because it's red, white, and blue. You have very poor circulations in the hands, and I'll show you those pictures in just a moment. So, for example, we went to Mount McKinley, and you see our UAA tent there. We had, at the 7,000-foot uh, level at the Cahiltna Glacier, uh, we had a tent there, and we had one at the 13,000-foot level. And what we're doing here, and you see the solar panels on the side that generated electricity for us, but we had a lot of people who had frostbite and cold injury, and that's why we were going there. There was about 30 of us that were on the mountain. Here I am getting ready to get in this small plane with all of this. Only one person there is not getting in that plane, if you can imagine, and all packed up. And uh, this is at the Cahiltna Glacier on Mount McKinley. And there you see the various tents. Over there to your left, that, that's our UAA tent, way over there at the very left. And then we have a Canadian tent and a Japanese tent and a Korean tent. We have people from all over the world who climb Mount McKinley every year, every summer. We have 1,000 people who, who take the summit every year with about um, uh, 600 who make it to the, um, to the summit. But uh, speaking of six, we have 60 people that are still frozen on Mount McKinley, people who never made it back who are, there are 60 bodies up there, one day will be discovered uh, in their Gore-Tex and whatnot, well-preserved. Uh, this is Lowell Thomas's plane. This is, uh, it's quite fascinating because there was a famous visitor that was there when we were there. Can anybody, does anybody know who that is? This is probably ahead of your time. You'd have to be probably 40 years old or older to remember who this is. It's Walter Cronkite. Have you ever heard of Walter Cronkite? He's like the, Thomas, the Tom Brokaw or the uh, uh, Williams. What's Williams' first name for NBC News? Does anybody watch NBC News? Okay. Anyway, he's the current anchor of NBC News. I uh, can't even remember his first name. It's something Williams. Uh, Peter? No, that was Peter Jennings. There was Peter Jennings. Brian Williams, okay, Brian Williams. He, he was the Brian Williams of our day uh, many years ago when I was your age. And that's Mount McKinley in the background to the left. We are on the Cahiltna Glacier. It takes two weeks from that point to get to the Cahiltna Glacier. That's my uh, North Face tent right behind them, which I get a tax deduction for uh, uh, working with that. I think I'm going to study uh, sunburn and sailboats next time so I can get a tax deductible sailboat. Uh, now, we started studying the I did a ski, the I did a rod, the I did a shoe, the I did a bike. We looked at all of these people who go out in the cold, and we measured them to find out what, A, psychologically, what makes them do these things, but also to measure their temperature. And so with the I did a ski, we measured the, with infrared monitors. We had infrared monitors to measure the hand in the cold, and we used them also at Providence Hospital for the frostbite and cold injury. Then we started studying skiers, and then we studied a woman who swam the Bering Strait. If you can imagine, from little diomede to big diomede. And of course, she did get hypothermia. My job was to look at her psychologically to find out why would somebody want to do this? Or are they really disturbed? And frankly, she wasn't at all. She's quite normal. Um, and then this is my uh, ophthalmologist. Uh, you know, the, he was uh, uh, Dr. Nybor, if you know him. Uh, He's using a telemetric procedure of radio frequency waves to measure her core body temperature as she swims through the water. Pretty 
uh, fascinating. And then, of course, she's being filmed. And then we started studying the military, teaching the military how to shoot straight in the, co in the foxholes in the cold. We trained some indoors, we trained some outdoors, and we found what's called state-dependent learning. That if you're going to train people to warm their hands in the cold, you need to train them in the cold. You can't train them in a gym and then take them outdoors and expect them to produce the same response. It's called state-dependent learning. We'll talk about that uh, later. So look at the natural cold weather laboratories in the state of Alaska. We got the uh, Mount McKinley, the Arctic Wilderness, the Cold Waters of Alaska, the Iditarod. When I showed this in France one year at the uh, 1903 win uh, 1993 Winter Olympics in Albertville in Chamonix in France, when I showed this, people thought it was the wild world of sports. Uh, they said, boy, you Americans, it's all, they said, you Americans are all alike. It's like Hollywood for you guys, right? Now here is a patient who has Raynaud's. It's called white finger. And people who live up in the northern latitudes, Iceland, Greenland, Norway, I belong to a group that's called the Circumpolar Health Organization. And these people look at the same disorders across the globe. It's quite fascinating. Where you live geographically at the same latitude, we have the same disorders. It's almost uh, the behaviors were right. It's the environment that controls what happens, whether it's trichomonas in bear meat, or whether it's seasonal affective disorder, or whether it's frostbite or cold injury, okay, or Raynaud's. Now look at this person here. This is a student that I had who had her temperature in her hands was extremely cold. She has Raynaud's. If you look at the tips, we call it a patriotic disorder because it's red, white, and blue. Okay, the red means that there's uh, plenty of blood. The blue means it's deoxygenated blood. And the white means the blanching where there is no blood. And look, I took this picture immediately after. Look at the difference. She had this whiteness, then the redness, then the blueness, and it keeps, it's irregular and inconsistent. And here's some more of the white finger. Look at the tip of these fingers, how blue it is. It's very blue, it's, it's called pooling. It's where the blood just pools and it's not returning back to the heart. It's not getting reoxygenated. And here's a person's hand temperature is 77 degrees. The average hand temperature of a person's hand is 90 degrees on the surface of the skin. The body core temperature is 98.6, but the hands and feet are furthest away from the heart. The blood has to flow all the way out there and back. The average temperature for women in their hands is 88 degrees. The average temperature for men is 92 degrees. But the average temperature for most people sitting in a chair doing absolutely nothing is 90 degrees. Now, if you put your hand next to your face, you can tell if your hand is colder than your face, then you are vasoconstricting. And what are the causes of vasoconstriction? Caffeine, nicotine, salt, sugar, and stress, which are American diet. <laughs> and we have 15 tons of aspirin used in America a day. What is all of that stress about? Why are we so stressed in this state, in this country? We are the richest people on the planet. And unfortunately, we have the most guns. Uptight people with guns is not a good combination, OK? Now, the average temperature, look at his hand temperature, 77 degrees. He would be warmer dead. Yeah, because uh, I've seen people with 60 degrees in their hands or 65 or lower 70s. If the, if the room temperature is 78 degrees, if they were dead, their body would warm to room temperature. So they're vasoconstricting because of the stress and anxiety and nervousness and tension. Now, we have a friend of mine came up with the uh, mood ring. The biofeedback ring, he made $11.6 million off of this. And they have all these little cards that you put the electric, you put your hand on, this liquid crystals that change the temperature. Pretty soon we'll have clothing that change temperature. We already have, I've got one that changes with the sun, but will change with your body color. Your body will, the color will change according to your body uh, temperature or any other physiological change. Uh, remember Darth Vader had all of this stuff on him where he can, he's got all this stuff going on. Uh, he could push a button and figure out what's going on with him. But in the future, we already have watches and stuff that will tell us our heart rate, our blood pressure, respiration. We have stuff that tells us our, uh, our, for people with diabetes, our blood sugar level and so forth. There's going to be using more and more of these devices to give us information. But not just give us information, not just bring it to our consciousness, but then regulate it, manage it without drugs. Now here's what we went for. Look at these this is the circulation issue. Here's what we went for, for the frostbite and the cold injury. Okay? And what we saw here 
our people on Mount McKinley, and this is part of our program at Providence Hospital where we were training people to warm their hands and feet. Because one degree centigrade means the difference between dead tissue and live tissue. And it was not because we're bringing blood and nutrients to that area that saves the tissue. Because Dr. Mills would always ask me, why do you think we're bringing blood flow to the extremities? Why do you think it's so important? And I would say, well, there's the, uh, you know, uh, vitamins, nutrients, and stuff like that. He goes, no, because we're 98% water. We are water beings. We need water. We need moisture. Most people are dehydrated. And because they're in the cold, they think that because there's uh, snow and ice everywhere, that there's water everywhere. It's like the desert. It's dry. And most people who have frostbite and cold injury is because they're dehydrated and or, as you will see in this picture here, this person lost all their fingers on the right hand, and if you look on the left hand, they lost their ring finger. Why did they lose their ring finger? Because the ring was cutting off the circulation. All of these hands are, ex are the same hands. It's used the uh, infrared tomography and the radioactive isotope, as you notice at the bottom there, that's a, a radioactive isotope that's measuring the perfusion or blood flow. And uh, obviously where it's blue in the tomography there, there's no blood flow. And he lost all four of those fingers, plus where the ring finger, where it's cutting off the circulation. And so we studied a thermal unit at Providence Hospital. We've had for many years the best thermal unit in the world that deals with burns, chemical burns, electrical burns, and uh, cold weather injuries. And so you can see this person with uh, frostbite. But don't be, uh, you know, misled. Underneath that black tissue, the eschar tissue, is sometimes live tissue. And we wait for the line of demarcation to occur on its own so that you don't prematurely cut off live tissue. And so here I am playing surgeon. And then finally we have uh, this person here who says, I don't need any biofeedback. I'm going to wait till breakup. 